Hi, I'm Justin from Vincraft, and I'm here to show you how to put new decals on your machine and um, how to take old ones off right. Somebody had fun. So the main two processes of removing an old decal and putting it on are kind of simple in how they sound. But the reality is, is that you, there are certain steps that you should do to ensure that the surface is clean so that when you put your new decal on, it sticks there and stays there for longer. It's not really hard. The, bit, the hardest part, honestly, is getting the old decal off. Sometimes removing the decal is as easy as just peeling it off. Which this one had too. I forgot about that. So yeah, some surfaces are naturally less adhesive friendly than others. Like this top here. You put a decal on here, it's probably not going to stick for very long because of the surface it has. In this case, it's like a little bumpy, raised up kind of surface. So these stickers probably wouldn't have lasted that long anyhow. So when you get to the flat, hard surfaces like this globe or the body where this becomes an issue. And I know a lot of people say, oh, you just take your fingernail and peel it up. But as you can see, it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. And this particular sticker is just peeling off in pieces. But yeah, once you get it going, it can just pull off pretty easy. But that's not always the case. Sometimes these stickers age and they get a lot stickier or get embedded into the machine. Or like you saw in that one, pieces come off. So that's where this little chiseler actually comes in handy as well. And the reason you want it is because the edge is designed to peel up a decal and it's plastic. So it doesn't damage your plastic. So what you'll do is you'll just simply take this little thing, slowly scrape just like that. And as you can see, because of the shape of the blade, it rolls the decal up. And of course, the more of the blade you use, the more of the decal gets rolled up. Now we're coming to these old decals. And as you can see, it is the exact same process. There's nothing changed because this is an old decal. So let's say you get a little impatient and you pry up the decal before you get most of it unstuck. You're not in a bad position. And this is something that could happen, especially with old paperback decals like this one. All you do is the same process. And as you can see, it has stuck a little bit of the old print on this glass. I should point out that this is technically not a decal. This is a sticker. The main difference, at least how I was taught, is that a sticker is paperbacked, whereas a decal is a vinyl. There we go. And the reason you saw that happen was because of a separation between the paper and the plastic sticker, which is kind of why decals are a little bit better than paperback stickers for that reason. And of course, somebody decided to put three on here. That that person was me, by the way. I did this for demonstration. But that's, that's always a possibility. Somebody may stack decals like this or stickers, or both. Sorry, Spidey. Now this one did what I just talked about. A little bit of it stayed behind, but again, you just take your little chiseler and just find a place to grab it. And it starts peeling off again. Just like that. I'll put another trap sticker under this one. But again, this is a realistic thing that could happen. You find a machine with too many decals on it, or somebody was just too lazy to take another one off. That's a common thing to see on these machines. But as you can see, even with this little chiseler, it just comes right up. See, this one here has got, I think, four. If you're wondering, yeah, I did this months ago. Mostly so that these particular decals would age. I wanted to see how they would actually age and what difficulties would come in for removing them but you know it's just like any other decal it's just time and patience Spider-Man fans are going to hate me after this aren't they and just to prove how easy this is I'm doing this at a weird angle normally I would be more like here working on the machine rather than having it face you but if I do this you can't see because of where I got the camera placed at the moment. I'm also working with this machine in one piece, 
because I'm I'm a little lazy. Don't do that. Take the machine apart. Now this particular decal had a bad placement because they they meaning me try to put it right here against the coin mech and the body. So that gave me a nice easy place to kind of start peeling from. But your machines may not be that lucky. As you can see, I've also placed multiple decals under the other. Because again, that's something you will run into with these older machines. You may have a, several decals on top of each other. That's something that's happened to me. You don't have to put too much pressure on it either, just as a note. You kind of just want to have enough to get the peel going. So again, here's another spot where I've tried putting on a raised surface to a lower surface and as you can see it creates a gap and that's something you also want to avoid on your decals if you're sticking anything on the outside of the machine make sure you're always on a level surface as far as where you're sticking your decals and again don't be lazy like i am take your machine apart well let's say you don't have that chiseler what do you want to grab and what do you not want to grab so you don't want anything harder than the material you're working on but the safe bet for removing any decal, be it a sticker like this or a vinyl sticker, is to grab something that's made of plastic like this little chiseler. Anything harder, you risk damaging the machine because it may be made of something softer, again, like this plastic, or maybe even a softer metal like aluminum if you're using a razor blade, which is made from a hard metal. Let's say you don't have a little chiseler. Let's say you have something like an old credit card or Maybe even something you use to actually put the vinyl on to your material. Unfortunately, in those cases, you have to give it a fighting chance. So that means soaking this in something like water, rubbing alcohol, or even something like Goo Gone. And Goo Gone is okay to use on plastic surfaces. If you're not entirely sure if Goo Gone is going to react with whatever you're working with, find somewhere that's not obvious and spray. What do I mean by not obvious? Well, for example, this panel goes into a channel. You can kind of see it, there's a little bit of age here where there's a little bit of dust and dirt and grime and UV rays. And you see there's a little clear spot where none of that is hit. So that'd be a perfect place to try. A lower corner, upper corner, just somewhere where it won't be seen. So in this case, I'm gonna use the Goo Gone. And what's kind of nice is it does have an orange smell, so it's kind of a lot nicer than say, rubbing alcohol. But again, rubbing alcohol can work. So give that a moment to soak in and then come back to it with whatever you have. Okay, we've given that a few minutes now and you don't you don't necessarily have to wipe away the goo gone, it just makes the mess a little bit easier to deal with. Now it does leave a little bit of a film, but again, that's not a big deal. That's something you can easily clean off. And now we're gonna take an attack decal this time. And that should be enough to really give it Nice pull. Well, this one has done the same, but like I said, that's kind of the biggest disadvantage about working with a paper backed sticker like this. Oftentimes it's easy to get the paper off, but when you want to try and get the actual sticker off, you've got to go into this two step process. And since this is smaller, let's attack this one first. Once you get to a certain point, should start to lift. There we go. Now, another way to remove a decal, but it's not quite as easy because it requires a lot more elbow grease, is soaking it in hot, soapy water. It takes a little bit longer. You need to let it stay in the water for a bit, but it works. It's just, it takes a long time. If you don't have that kind of patience, I'd say go grab some goo gone. That's the easiest thing to do. There we go. That decal has been peeled. So now you've removed your decal, but let's say there is some adhesive left over. Like there's something here, and there's definitely stuff on this, the other side here you want to get off. Honestly, the easiest thing to do is again grab your goo gone, spray it, let it set for a minute. Again, you don't even have to get this particular little chiseler. A plastic razor blade is a great way of taking off old decals like this. That's easily coming off. <laughs> That's amazing. 
I've used Goo Gone quite often, but it's still amazing just how much it can actually remove. Again, we got some sticky stuff up here. But instead of the Goo Gone, let me show you what rubbing alcohol can do. Put a little bit on there. You don't want to do too much because alcohol is kind of expensive. Again, just like with the Goo Gone, you want to let it sit for just a minute. And you can try using a paper towel and see if that will remove it. And in this case, it sort of has, but it's not removing everything. And this is the case where using your little chiseler or plastic razor blade will come in handy. And again, once the alcohol attacks the adhesive, that's it. That sticker is coming off or whatever goo you're dealing with. Now, one thing I will say with rubbing alcohol, do not use this near an open heated element. It is flammable, especially during the winter if you have like a heater on. You definitely don't want to use it if you can. But again, it just attacks adhesive so well, but that is honestly one of the best ways to remove any old decal. Once you get that old adhesive off and those old decals off, you want to make sure that your panel or globe, or wherever you're sticking your stickers to, is clean. And that means clean from the oils of your hands and the oil of the Goo Gone, because that's where the orange scent comes from. It's an oil in the Goo Gone. So that means you need to take and wash it with warm, soapy water, and then maybe even come back with rubbing alcohol again, and just rubbing whatever you're going to stick your sticker to. So in this case, I'm going to stick one sticker right here. So I know that I want to clean this area in particular. In case you're wondering, yeah, alcohol wipes could work too. You don't necessarily have to put isopropyl alcohol on a towel or put it on the surface. And you can use those. Also, if you have any kind of glass or lens cleaning alcohol swabs, you can use that too. Anything with isopropyl alcohol or using Goo Gone, that's the easiest way to get rid of any leftover residue. Now, once your surface is clean of everything, including the oils from your skin by rubbing it down with rubbing alcohol. You don't want to touch that surface again, at least in the area you're going to stick your decal. For me, I'm going to stick it right about here. Now, you could eyeball this, but if you really want to make sure your sticker is in the correct position, get yourself something called a grease pencil and mark the center of where you want to stick. This panel is nine inches. So we want to go to the four and a half mark, and that is dead center of this panel. I have this little cut line here, so I'm going to cheat and use that, but that's where you mark your grease pencil, so you know this is exactly where your center is. I would also recommend doing the same on your decals, but not on the decal itself. And that's one of the things that's going to be different about the decals I sell. They won't come without transfer paper. A lot of stickers do. And to be frank, I don't like that. It's, but that's a recipe for disaster for somebody that's not used to sticking decals. So what I'm gonna include on all my stickers, doesn't matter if it's reverse or forward, is transfer paper. This is what transfer paper looks like. It's a low adhesion sticker that sticks to your decal and allows you to peel it off the backing of your sticker. What's also great about this is that it allows you to write on it. So let's say I want to find the center of this decal. Well, with this being an inch and three quarters, I need to find around seven eighths of an inch, right about here somewhere. And as you can see, I've just written on it and marked it with a C. So let me know it's my center line. 
bring back. Our panel. And again, I'm cheating because I have this divider in my table. I know that's my center line. Because I know both of those things, I can now take my decal. But as you can see, it's a clean peel. It also gives you places to grab without actually touching your decal. So now you want to come over, find your center, and stick. Now you can do this by your finger, but what's better is to use a squeegee. And that's what this is, this is a squeegee. And my particular squeegee here comes with a felt side for less damage and a pure plastic side. You can try to use this a little more often, it's a little bit softer. But now, you want to work your way from the center. just to ensure there's no air bubbles. Now remember, I just marked on this. If I didn't have this transfer paper on this decal, that means I would mark on my decal. But because I put it on the transfer paper, actually this transfer decal is kind of And then you would line it up to the surface, just like that. And then you would simply peel it up Just like that. You should have noticed something right away. I balled it up probably a little too quick, but that's because this particular transfer paper is peeling up my black. Now, in most cases that shouldn't happen, but in this case, this transfer paper is pretty sticky. That also brings up two other points on why I am laminating every decal I print. One, as you see with the transfer paper, that causes an issue. Second, Let's say somebody just happens to come by with a shopping cart and bumps it. Oh, look at that. Now, I'll admit that's a pretty hard hit because it peeled up the sticker too. But, look at that. It's nicking away at the print of the decal. That's why my decals will be laminated. Kind of sucks how to show you this way because I didn't really plan on it. I thought maybe this ink would dry a little bit better or this transfer paper will work better, but just it just didn't in this case. So let's go ahead and take this off now. Because it's not much residue, I'm just going to splash it. That's another way to put rubbing alcohol on as well. Just splash it on your towel. Okay, so now I've showed you the forward decal. Let me show you a reverse one. Now, what is a reverse decal? What makes it special? Well, the great thing about your reverse decal is that you can stick it on the inside of your glass. And you see, I have a bit of a transfer paper here, but here as well. But this is the forward side. This is the actual normal paper that you get with any decal. So as you can see, the sticky side is the printed side. Again, what we're going to do is we're going to take and line up our decal. Stick it on. transfer paper but now you see it stuck well what good is that if you're looking at it from this side well you're not looking from this side you're looking at it from that side while the biggest difference of a reverse decal is the fact that you're sticking on the inside of your glass or globe it comes with two advantages the first advantage is impacts anything that impacts this glass it's going to scratch the glass, not your decal. You can easily take it out with some plastic rubbing on that. The other is that there is less of a chance for somebody to try and peel this off. People found their machines missing the price decal simply because a kid or an adolescent or just some jerk decided, oh, I'm going to peel off the sticker, ha ha ha. Well, with this being stuck on the inside, you can't do that. Right? It's, I know it's going to be a goofy example, but can't do it. So that's it. That's as easy as it gets when it comes to sticking a decal and removing the old one. Even the surface prep is pretty easy, especially when you have the right tools and use the right stuff like Goo Gone or isopropanol alcohol. So thank you for checking out this quick little video on how to prep your machine for these new decals and how to remove these old ones. If you're interested or have more questions, be sure to contact me, Justin at VinCraftCustoms.com. I've been Justin with VinCraft and I hope to see you in the next one.